Did you know that one of the most thrilling chapters in the Sorcerer's Stone book was left out of the movie? Harry, Ron, and Hermione's first year at Hogwarts is filled with exciting adventures, but for the film, they really had to cut things down to focus on the main plot. Everything that happens leads up to the final moment of Harry confronting Quirrell and retrieving the Sorcerer's Stone, but the book spends much more time to elaborate on interesting moments like Harry's other Quidditch games, their classes, and perhaps one of the most insane parts of the entire book, which is Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Remember this little guy? Well, in the movie he gets a couple minutes of screen time, and the next thing we hear about him was that he was taken away. But in the book, this escapade takes up an entire chapter, in which Hagrid raises the dragon, it nearly outgrows the hut, Ron gets bitten, and Hermione and Harry brainstorm a plan to smuggle the illegal dragon out of the castle. Sadly, all of this juicy lore and storytelling is completely removed from the film. But today, we get to uncover all of it as we dive into this next scene of the Sorcerer's Stone movie and its corresponding chapter in the book. My name is Gibby, and welcome back to episode 13 of Movies vs. Manuscripts, Harry Potter edition. This is the show where I take your favorite wizarding franchise and compare the film adaptations to J.K. Rowling's original book series, finding every single difference scene by scene. Today, we head into a short scene in the movie, which is just a very condensed version of an entire chapter of the book, so we have a lot to cover. Before we jump into the video, though, I wanted to shout out this commenter. Each week, I'll be highlighting one of my favorite comments from a previous episode, so be sure to share your thoughts down below when you're done watching. Also, YouTube says that 95% of you aren't even subscribed, which is almost as bad a felony as Harry getting into illegal dragon smuggling at the age of 11. So hit that subscribe button and tune in every Sunday for new episodes. Per usual, I'll be covering all the changes across the four categories of characters, timeline, location, and plot. But before we jump into the changes, it's important to refresh our memory on what happens in this short scene. Picking up from where we left off last week, the trio has found out who Nicholas Flamel is, and the movie quickly cuts to nighttime as these three students run to Hagrid's hut. Hagrid tells them that he isn't in a fit state to entertain and begins to shut the door, but as the trio shouts that they know about the Sorcerer's Stone, Hagrid is forced to let them in. They tell Hagrid that they know Snape is trying to get the stone, but they just don't know why. Hagrid then tells them that it wouldn't make sense for Snape to try to get the stone as he's one of the people guarding it. He then says that it doesn't even matter that other people are guarding it because nobody's getting past Fluffy anyway. Not a soul knows how, except for him and Dumbledore. After realizing that he shouldn't have said that bit out loud, we hear a tapping noise coming from the fire, and Hagrid lifts a large egg out of a pot that's over the fire. He sets it on his table, and Ron identifies it as a dragon egg. He asks Hagrid how he got it, as they are extremely rare, and Hagrid said that he won it off someone at the pub. They then witness the egg hatch and a baby dragon emerge, and Hagrid names it Norbert. After nearly getting his beard burnt off, Hagrid notices someone watching through his window, and Harry sees Malfoy quickly running off. Now the trio and Hagrid know they're in real trouble, first for being out of bed after curfew, and also because Hagrid knows that he's not allowed to have a dragon. But we'll save more of their getting caught and their punishment for next week. As for this week, we already have so much to unpack, as 90% of this chapter is removed from the film. You want to know what isn't changed? The fact that there's a dragon named Norbert. Other than that, we essentially have a completely different story. So let's start off by covering our first three categories of characters, timeline, and location, as those are a bit shorter this week. First, for characters, we really only have one difference, and that is Filch. You'll find out how he's involved at the very end of the plot changes, as he only comes up during the last page of the chapter, but for the movie, they don't really include him in this scene. Second, we have a couple of key timeline differences that impact the plot significantly. To start, in the movie, they make it seem like right after they find out about Nicholas Flamel, they go straight to Hagrid's. But in the book, they don't search out Hagrid. They continue their studies as exams are approaching, and it's actually Hagrid who bumps into them weeks later. Also, the trio's visit to Hagrid is all messed up. They visit Hagrid's hut during the day, not after curfew. Plus, the egg doesn't hatch until days later, and again, it is during the middle of the day that they then visit Hagrid to see this. The nighttime portion of things comes later during their smuggling adventure, but of course we'll dive into that more in the plot changes. Third, we finally have location, and there is only one primary spot missing. Of course, as it is pretty much every week, there are a whole bunch of locations throughout the castle that are omitted in the scenes, so I'm not going to list out all of those. But this particular location actually plays into a key moment, and that location is the library. It is where the trio bump into Hagrid and begin this whole subplot of the book. And speaking of subplot, let's head into the plot changes now and figure out how exactly Harry and Hermione smuggled this illegal dragon out of the castle. 
Per usual, I can't go into every single line of dialogue, so if you're looking to explore the Wizarding World and this story more in depth, I highly encourage checking out the audiobooks on Audible. That is primarily how I consume my book entertainment, as it lets me explore these stories very similarly to how you experience a movie. Check out the link in my description for a free trial on Audible and claim your free copy of The Sorcerer's Stone today. Alright, let's get into these changes. As always, let's begin with a quick overview of what we learn at the beginning of this chapter. Because the book takes place over an entire school year, the chapters often skip around to these notable events, and there are weeks in between the chapters that we miss. Most of the time these just include classes, Quidditch practice, and just normal Hogwarts stuff like Peeves pouring water on students. But usually at the beginning of the chapter, there are two or three key notes that Harry observes during these weeks that gives us incredible insights into the Wizarding World or help round out our key characters. Per usual, if it's something that is shown in the movie, I'll skip over it. So all of these points are things that are completely omitted from the film. First, Harry notices that Quirrell didn't seem to figure out how to get past the three-headed dog. If you remember from last week, the Golden Trio currently believes that Snape is after the stone, and he is using Quirrell to try to get past Fluffy. They thought that Quirrell would quickly break down and help Snape, but so far Harry thinks that he's holding out against Snape's threats. Although he does note that the stress seems to be getting to Quirrell, as he is growing thinner and more pale by the day, as if the life was being sucked out of him. Of course, we know the answer to this change in appearance, but that will show up at the end of the story. Also, a funny note is that they become protective of Quirrell, as they thought that he was the good guy. Harry would give him compliments when they passed in the hallway, and Ron started telling people off for making fun of his stutter. Second, we hear a decent amount about their school time and struggle with studying. Exams were fast approaching, and of course Hermione dove headfirst into studying, worrying like crazy about passing the tests. Ron and Harry then got dragged along with her to the library, as now they're all friends, and although they studied as well, they definitely got a lot more frustrated. But it's actually during one of these study sessions in the library that we have our first notable change. You see, in the movie, pretty much right after they figure out what Fluffy is guarding, we see them turn up on Hagrid's doorstep. But as I mentioned in the timeline changes, they don't go searching for him in the book. It's actually while they're in the library studying one day that Hagrid turns up. Here's how things go down in the book. As they're studying, they see Hagrid enter the library, looking very awkward and out of place as he seems to be holding something behind his back. They ask him what he's up to and he says nothing, but in a very suspicious tone. He asks if they're still researching Flamel and they tell him that they figured that out ages ago, as well as what Fluffy is guarding. But before they can say it out loud, Hagrid quickly shushes them. Harry then says that he's been meaning to visit Hagrid as he has lots of questions about the stone, but Hagrid gets upset and says to stop saying stuff out loud and just visit him later. To be honest, I feel bad for Hagrid in this moment, as he's worried that he'll get in trouble since students aren't supposed to know about the stone, and the trio is being quite obnoxious with this information. Harry says that they'll then visit him later, and Hagrid leaves the library. And this moves us into our next change, which is the setup for Hagrid's dragon fiasco. Hagrid and his dragon are the primary focus of this chapter in the book, as well as this scene in the movie. In fact, the chapter in the book is even titled Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. But as you probably guessed, we get so much more context in the book, and the trio is already tipped off to Hagrid's dragon before they even visit his hut. You see, after Hagrid leaves the library, the trio is still curious about one odd thing. What was he hiding behind his back? After Hermione asks this question out loud, Ron says that he's going to look at the section that Hagrid was in, and after slamming a few books down, they realize that Hagrid was reading up on taking care of dragons. Harry then says one of the lines that we get from the movie, which is, Hagrid's always wanted a dragon, he told me so the first time I ever met him. And Ron fills us in on a key bit of information, which is that dragon breeding was outlawed by the Warlocks Convention of 1709. He says that they had to ban them, as it's hard to keep muggles from noticing dragons in people's backyards. Plus, they are near impossible to tame, and Ron mentions that his brother Charlie has some crazy scars from wild ones in Romania. After Hermione asks if there are dragons in Britain, Ron says of course there are, and that the Ministry of Magic has a difficult time hushing them up, and they constantly have to put spells on muggles who have seen them. All of this adds up to one burning question in the minds of our three main characters. What is Hagrid up to? Well, now we come to the moment that is paralleled in the movie, with the trio showing up on Hagrid's doorstep. Of course, as we've already covered, this is not a surprise visit since Hagrid had met them earlier in the library. But unlike the movie, they are keeping a keen eye out for anything dragon related. And this brings us to our next change, which is that the trio doesn't tell Hagrid outright that Snape is trying to steal the stone. Hagrid is very reluctant to give them any information, and then after some flattery from Hermione, she gets him to at least tell them which professors are guarding the stone. Hagrid lifts them off and ends with Snape to the surprise of the trio. 
That's when we get the lines from Hagrid of him telling them that he's one of the people guarding it, so why would he want to steal it? In the movie, the trio is dead set on Snape, and comes into the hut telling Hagrid that they know he's after it, they just don't know why. But as you can tell from the book version, they keep this to themselves as they're simply trying to do some recon. Next, the night that they visit Hagrid and ask about the stone isn't the night that the dragon egg hatches. To condense the timeline, the writers move these two separate nights together, but in the book, they happen at way different times. The first night that they're with him, they end their conversation by talking to Hagrid about the dragon, and Hermione reminds Hagrid that he lives in a wooden house. The book then cuts to an unknown amount of time later, as the trio is at breakfast, and Harry receives a letter from Hagrid with a simple note that says, it's hatching. It is then that night that they visit Hagrid, and we get the second part of the movie scene where they watch the egg hatch. Before we get to those differences though, there's one small change we need to address, which is Malfoy's involvement. You see, in the movie, Malfoy seems to just randomly show up as he spies outside Hagrid's window. But in the book, we learn how exactly Malfoy heard about the dragon in the first place. After Harry receives his letter from Hagrid, Ron wants to skip classes and go straight to Hagrid's hut, but Hermione won't allow it. Ron frustratedly asks Hermione, how many times in our lives are we going to get to see a dragon hatching? Harry quickly tells his two friends to shut up and stop bickering, as he notices that Malfoy was close behind them and listening in, and Harry wondered how much of the conversation Draco had heard. This is a lot more of a logical foreshadowing of events, whereas in the movie, Draco is really just there randomly for no reason. Okay, now let's move on to the actual hatching of the dragon egg, and then the trio's plan to smuggle the dragon out of the castle. I still think it's funny that they're essentially a group of 11 year olds committing a wizarding felony. But anyway, the scene we get in the movie is essentially the exact same as what's in the book, with the interaction ending as they see Malfoy darting back towards the school after seeing the dragon in Hagrid's hut. What got changed are the ensuing events. In the movie, as the trio is walking back through the castle, they get stopped by a disappointed McGonagall. But in the book, they don't get in trouble for a whole week. We'll be covering the moment they get caught in their detention in the Forbidden Forest next week, but for this week, we have something much more insane to discuss, which is their plot to smuggle Norbert out of the castle. Here's what happens in the book. First, Harry describes the whole week as being very difficult and stressful, as they reasoned with Hagrid each day to just let the dragon go. Plus, every time they saw Draco, he had a horrible look on his face, and they knew that they didn't have much time before he would rat them out. One time when they visited Hagrid, they noticed that the dragon had grown three times its original size, and Hagrid told them that he named the dragon Norbert. While Hagrid played with the dragon, Harry suddenly came up with a brilliant idea. Ron's brother Charlie, who worked with dragons in Romania, could come take Norbert. Harry shared the idea with Ron, and after they agreed upon it, they convinced Hagrid that it was the only way, as in a couple weeks, Norbert would be bigger than Hagrid's hut. Then the book cuts to a week later, as Ron comes bursting into the Gryffindor common room with a bloodied hand. He had just been down helping Hagrid feed rats to Norbert, and got bit. He says that Hagrid has gone mad, as after Ron got bit, Hagrid told him off for scaring Norbert, and then sang a lullaby to the dragon. Thankfully, at this moment, Hedwig appeared and delivered a letter from Charlie. Charlie agreed that he would take the dragon and suggested that they meet some of his friends on the tallest tower at nighttime so they could sneak the dragon off without being seen. They then wrote back to Charlie confirming the plans, but things got worse in the coming days as Ron's hand seemed to be infected from the dragon bite and he was forced to go to Madame Pomfrey. Then things got even worse than that, as Draco came by to borrow one of Ron's books as an excuse to laugh at him and taunt him while he was in the hospital. But as if that wasn't enough, the letter that Charlie wrote them was in the book that Malfoy took, so now Draco knows exactly what their plan is to smuggle the dragon. Before we move to the finale of this thrilling tale, I've gotta say that I can't believe this was removed from the film. I mean, I get having to crunch things for time, but this is such an incredible chapter that really doesn't get its full credit in the movie. So much so that they don't even hone in on the illegal nature of a dragon, but we simply cut to them going to detention and Hagrid saying, they took Norbert. It's quite anticlimactic, whereas this dragon smuggling is a thrilling adventure, which I'm excited to see in the Harry Potter TV show that is coming out in a few years. These are the kind of moments that they'll be able to spend entire episodes on instead of having to skip over like in the movies. Anyway, let's head into the finale of this chapter as the trio smuggles Norbert and we figure out how they get caught by Malfoy. Harry and Hermione are about to tell Hagrid about the plan, and they debate on what to do with this latest development of Draco taking the letter. They know Malfoy is aware of the situation, but Hermione tells Harry that it's too late to write Charlie and change plans, 
and this might be their only chance to get rid of the dragon, who has been quite a nuisance. As they head down to Hagrid's hut, they even see Fang the dog sitting outside with a bandaged tail. After confirming the plans with the reluctant Hagrid, we fast forward to Saturday night as Harry and Hermione are ready to execute Operation Get Rid of Norbert. Hagrid had packed Norbert away in a crate along with some extra brandy, which is what a dragon would drink, and a teddy bear just in case he got lonely. As they headed up the castle though, Harry could hear Norbert shredding the teddy bear. As you can imagine, they struggled to get the giant box up a tower, and as they got to the corridor beneath the tower, they saw a sudden movement in the hall. Holding very still under the invisibility cloak, they saw Professor McGonagall with Draco by the ear, as he was trying to tell her that Harry Potter was coming by with a dragon. She told him that was utter rubbish, and that he would be going to detention for being out of bed. This sudden surge of joy from seeing Draco getting in trouble helped them get the final boost of energy to haul Norbert's crate to the top of the tower. Tower. They waited for about 10 minutes, and then Charlie's friends arrived on broomsticks to take the dragon away. After watching them fly off with Norbert, they happily bounced down the stairs, finally relieved that this chapter of their year was over. But to their dismay, the face of Filch loomed up out of the darkness as they reached the bottom of the stairs, and they realized that they left the invisibility cloak on top of the tower. As you can tell, this is a massive omission in the movie almost too large to separate into multiple changes for this video. All in all, we miss out on a crazy adventure that included espionage, smuggling, Ron nearly losing his hand to a dragon, and much more. As for their getting caught, which is in the scene right after this one in the movie, that will be left for next week, as the next chapter dives into that quite a bit, and there are plenty of changes to cover. But for this week, that wraps things up. So now, I want to hear from you. What did you think about this scene in the movie? Do you wish that we would have seen a longer dragon subplot that was adventurous like this one? Let me know in the comments below. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and check out the series playlist to catch up on any episodes that you might have missed so far. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next episode.